Hello you all. In this video I'm going to tell you the story of how I met my cosmic counterpart or twin flame, twin soul as most people call them. It was a bumpy road before it was time to actually meet up. But it was all worth so while. And it's the most precious God given that can be ever presented to you. So stay tuned. Here we go. I will try to keep my story brief, but I'm not sure if I will succeed. My story began since a young age on. We had a wonderful childhood with loving and caring parents who took a real interest in their children and were all loved equally. We were in contact with all our family members, even the ones overseas. I was a happy child, only I always had this eerie feeling of missing someone. And I asked my mum about it several times, actually. Am I one of a twin, maybe? And did my twin brother or twin sister die, maybe? And I stated it differently each time, but my mum was persistent. No, you weren't. And if you were, don't you think we should have told you about it already? Miscarrying isn't something to be ashamed of after all. And we are always out in the open when it comes to family matters. So honestly, no, you weren't. And she each time asked me why I was thinking like that. But I never really answered but one time. Because I have this eerie feeling of missing out on someone. Like this whole being alive thing feels incomplete or something. She didn't know what to think about it, but said, I don't think I can help you with that. As time passed and I grew from puberty into adolescence, this feeling faded. Because I honestly was too busy exploring life and all it offers that I didn't have time to think about anything but living in the now. And I became a mum at 22. I was and still am over the top happy with my girl. She grew up a strong and independent woman. And now, in a month's time, she will be 29. The odd thing was, although I knew, no, who her father was, is, whom she resembles just as much as she resembles me. There was this odd feeling of there was someone else in this process, but didn't give it any more thought because it's a hell of a job becoming a mum. because you will not be a mum when your child is born. You become a mum along the way together. That's my opinion and my experience. That was 1989. Now we skip four years to 1994. Nico's father and I split when she was two years of age, and that was the best decision I could have ever made, seeing the circumstances, him being a wonderful friend to the little kid, which is important too, but not so much a parent. So we split, and that was all okay. We grew apart, and that was that. He stayed in our lives because it was too important for Nico, because she needed her dad just as much as me, but differently. They still see each other weekly and have a wonderful bond. So in 1994, I met this man. His name is David and the weirdest stuff started happening. Looking back at it, I know he inflamed me. That maybe sounds weird now, but listen on and you will understand. I started having flashbacks of previous lives. Previous lives, not exactly my choice of words. Because in my awareness, everything is now and all these lives are just extensions of one soul. But I will use the terms that are common knowledge. So I started having these flashes of previous lives. I literally smelled him from a distance, heard him talk from a distance, saw his face pop up from photos and so on and so forth. And we knew what we said or we were thinking. The weird stuff we could complete each other sentences and we didn't even know who we were to each other. We just met. We literally had no idea what was going on. But that man was the closest to me I've ever been to someone. Don't be mistaken though. 
because we never had a relationship as in the sexual sense. It all was strictly platonic, extremely arousing with an almost explosive sexual tension, but we never made love, physically, for the simple reason that he was married. And he didn't mind that fact, but I did. This went on for four years. I never hoped or expected him to leave his wife and children, but we couldn't stay apart for four years and then I stopped it, because I knew that if I ever wanted to be in a healthy relationship with someone, I needed to say goodbye to David, to some extent. Eighteen years passed as in and now, and he is still in my life, here, there and everywhere, but in a distance. Before I ended this relationship for the time being, I started having out-of-body experiences, visions and a lot. All sorts, but one in particular I have to share. One evening I was reading a book and all of a sudden the lines became blurry, like some kind of foggy curtain was draped over the pages. And my vision turned outward, like I was partly out of my body, but not totally, really strange. And I saw the torso of a man head, shoulders to the waist down, but I saw him from the right side of his face, not face to face, didn't see his eyes either, and he just stood there, saying nothing at all, like a tailor's dummy. He didn't do anything, that is, he didn't move or speak, but there was this extreme, intense, warm, unconditional love flow coming toward me and flowing back to him. The energy was almost visible, that strong. And as he stood there for a while, giving me the opportunity to observe and feel him, David showed up. I saw him straight in the face. His walk, the way he moves, he holds his head, the whole David enchilada. He looked at me, turned a quarter clockwise, looking that man straight in the face. And then he bowed for him, a reverence, like royals do. Or commoners do, for royals, the weirdest thing really. Then he walked up to me, hugged me, and walked on. And the vision stopped. Looking backward, that was probably the moment David and I said goodbye to each other. But it didn't feel like that at that exact moment. After that vision, I started seeing the most awesome pair of indefinable green eyes. Sometimes almost aqua other times like moss green, soft, loving eyes, looking at me, and at first I saw only the eyes, and that could be at all moments during the day, and later I saw vaguely the contouring of a head, but far from sharp. That went on a year and a half or two, don't know in months exactly. And then la pièce de résistance happened. One morning I opened my eyes in 1997 and for some seconds it was just like every morning, happy face and then in a split second an intense feeling of loss and loneliness fell over me and I started crying like a child. There was only one impulse at that moment and that was calling my dad. He picked up the phone and I only said, Dad, can you please come over? On my way, was what he said, and 15 minutes later, he stood in my hallway. I fell in his arms and started crying all over again. Poor dad, he thought something extremely terrible had happened to me, which wasn't the case at all. What is going on? Please tell me, said my dad to me as he pushed me away a bit to look me in the eyes. I don't know. I just feel so lonely, sad and lost all of a sudden, and I don't know why. He just let me sob as long as I needed it. He drank some coffee and went home when he felt he could leave me alone, asking me several times if I was okay. That feeling I had an entire day, as the intense feeling of loneliness faded with the hours that passed. After that event, my spiritual growth took a spurt at lightning speed. It increased immense already when I met David in 1994. But that was nothing compared to what happened then. Now I will skip to 2004. In 2002, I met this wonderful soulmate whom I adored since day one. 
and still do ever since. In 2004, though, I became pregnant, totally unexpected. We weren't planning on expanding our family, for we together had already three almost grown-up children. It all came to light when I all of a sudden started having these terrible belly aches. Out of nowhere, really. And I'm not a going to the doctor easy kind of girl, but I said to my man, I think you better get me into the ER fast. As they rolled me in, a wonderful team bowed over me and started asking all sorts of questions and doing tests, blood work and so on. And with that, the itching started. And I got these weird lesions as big as a regular pinky fingernail and I couldn't stop scratching. My man said, stop the scratching or you will ruin your skin. Just to state how hard I rubbed my skin all over my body, only not in my face and the main lot was on my belly. Then one nurse asked me, can it be that you are pregnant? I didn't understand what that had to do with the itching but answered, it's not totally impossible of course, but no, I am not pregnant. She asked if she could take a test and I granted her. Then she came back and said, Congratulations, you are pregnant. That was one of the most surreal moments in my life. My man and I looked at each other and knew by instant that whomever wanted to be with us was welcome, even unplanned. The belly aches stopped as well as the itching and we went home. Nonetheless, I knew this pregnancy wouldn't last. The belly aches and the itching, no one had any ID and neither did I. But this all gave me the feeling I would lose this baby. And I did, two days later. As I was recovering on the couch in the living, at one moment I felt something or someone appear from behind. So I looked over my shoulder and one gorgeous slender young man appeared me with the same amazing green colored eyes I saw in the visions years earlier. Not the same eyes, but the same color. And he walked up to me and said, It's okay, Mama. I just needed to connect with you and be with you for a while. He kissed me on the forehead and walked into the nothingness again. A day later, I had two visions. In one, I was looking at my vagina who was in the position to give birth. But there was no child, only this enormous light I gave birth to. And in the other I saw two angels whirling around each other. They didn't have wings or something, but clothed in long white and white colored robes, and they flew around each other in a playful kind of way. I never deciphered the visions because I just accepted them as they came and what they showed. If this ever would mean anything, it would be revealed to me, that much I knew. Nonetheless this all, I suddenly was a mum from a beautiful young man who would never walk the planet or rest in my arms. But I had peace with it, because of him showing up the way he did. Then we make another jump to 2007. The experience of what seemed to be the most catastrophic day of my life. Then, not anymore, because now I know. I woke up on a sunny day in June and all seemed fine at first. And then, like out of nowhere, a wave of sadness fell over me. And it wasn't just sadness, it was an intense kind of real depressive state of mind. And I was missing a baby girl all of a sudden, and I didn't see any light at the end of an endless tormenting tunnel. Suicide thoughts, the whole shebang when it comes to being intense, miserable. I thought I was going mad. Never experienced such before, and on top of it all, I had no reason to feel what I felt. My daughter was with me and lived under my roof. I had a fulfilled and happy life. So what the F was going on? 
I was scarily afraid of some kind of door to my unknown subconscious innermost darkness that opened, and I freaked by the thought that what, if so, it never could be locked in again. And while the hours passed, down to earth as I am, I started analyzing but couldn't come to any conclusion but one. This had nothing to do with me. But at the same time, what was this, or better asked, who was this? Because these were genuine human feelings. And I knew for certain, no one in my surroundings felt that way. So, where did it come from? It lasted from waking until sleeping again. The same day, when I woke up, everything was gone. Not even a split of an inch, if we are talking measurements, was left of what I went through a day earlier, and that even puzzled me the most. A week or maybe two later, I got a confirmation of what I went through that exact day. I was browsing the internet looking for the URLs of the official websites of some bands and music altogether, to link on my blog back then. As I went from A to B and so forth through my music files, I came up to the I. There was just one band in excess and only one song, Suicide Blonde, because of a happy memory in 1991. I just had kept that in honor to the people who were with me right then and there. Didn't know anything else, just the name of the band and the song, and I never gave it any thought whatsoever. Because I'm into music, and I don't even want to know who plays it, because it's about the feel, and knowing too much destroys your feel. Same as watching video clips, enormously disturbing. Never watch clips. That explained, I went to search for the official In Excess website and found it. We are talking 2007 here. So I clicked on that URL, but a totally different website opened. White background, black fonts. And as I don't do coincidences, I started reading some of the text. It seemed to be a chapter of a book or something. But as I started reading, I got goosebumps all over and sat with a wide open mouth in total astonishment, trying to come to terms with what was written there. The exact same feelings I experienced a week or two earlier were written down exactly there. And I thought, what the F is this? Afterward, I found that it was written by a mother and a sister in honor of their son and brother who committed suicide. His mother's surname was Glassup, and I got from the, from the text the man they were talking about was a Michael. And I thought to myself, I don't know any Michael Glassup, so why on earth did I have to feel what he must have felt at some point in time? But well, yeah, strange things already happened to me for a long time and again. If it was my to know, I would become to know. But it was bedazzling. A month or so later, I was given the most precious cosmic given, next to my daughter and son, that was ever presented to me. One night, around mid-August, I woke up with a feeling that there was something in our bedroom that wasn't supposed to be there. Or better said, what was never there before. I looked to the right and my man was sound asleep. I looked to my left. And there was a light being beside me. I recognized immediately Freddy, my spirit guide, who answered me back in mid-90s on my question, will I ever be able to see you with when the time is right and you are ready? I asked him back then, ready for what? But he never answered the question. So I was overjoyed now. I saw Freddy, so the time is right. But ready for what exactly? He smiled the cheekiest smile looked at me and turned his head to the left, so I followed his movement while putting myself up on my elbows. And there he was, sitting at the foot of our bed, and I uttered, That's the man from my vision! And I saw again just one side of his presence. 
only this time the other left side of his face. While watching him sitting in silence, my spirit guide said, May I introduce you, your twin in essence? I didn't even have the time to come to terms with what he just said because the man turned his face. And I looked at the most amazing light being eyes I ever saw. The same indefinable green eyes from several other short-lived visions. What happened then? I will never be able to explain in proper words, but I'll do the best I can. There was this click, like our eyes locked and I immediately flipped out of my body like a magnet. I didn't actually do anything, but I was drawn toward him and I became him and he became me and we became one and divided again, but still part of each other in some way. And a cosmic dance started to happen. We floated into space, a total space of nothingness and wholeness all together. And it was dark, but not an unpleasant darkness and lightness all the same. We became huge and tiny again. We swirled through several dimensions with almost lightning speed and everywhere we went, there was this harmonious, unconditional love flow I never experienced before. He held me and caressed me and I felt like a goddess in his arms. I don't know exactly what time for us to leave that heavenly space, but we did and I landed back in my body and fell prompt asleep again. The morning after I thought, well, that was some experience, or was it a dream? And the thought didn't even cross my mind clearly, and he stuck his head through the veil again, saying, Here I am. I'm real, and I'm here to stay. You partly merged, and I will never, ever go away. And I simply said, Okay. And then it all started. The communications, chatting about little things, laughing a lot, talking about serious significant things, but most of all he told me who he was in his last embodiment. I was the one a lot of people thought to know as Michael Hutchins, a poet, a lyricist, and best known as the frontman of the band named In Excess. I thought your name was Glassup. That's my mother's name the surname of my stepdad. Just like that it went on and it never stopped. In the meantime I experienced a lot. He took me on a trip through his life in several age stages because I didn't know him so he would show me. We have these sessions as earth keepers, long story, very metaphysical. We assist people who ask for help especially when it comes to twin flames, twin souls terms we don't prefer because we see it as cosmic partnership for we aren't two because in fact we are one I am transmitting cosmic information he puts through me not daily, not weekly but exactly when the time is right I feel him sitting behind me most of the time but also next to me and standing next to me a lot of these times it's his presence I feel his energy field so to speak but sometimes he appears right in front of me and there was one tiny moment until now that he almost manifested right in front of me and it scared the bejesus out of me and I said sorry but that's too soon for me. When the years passed I had several weird physical sensations to go through. I got bronchial asthma all of a sudden but I never had any troubles with my lungs, but I got it because he had it and got little freckles all over my arms. I never had, but he had them. Sometimes I look in the mirror and look in his eyes, literally, only then they appear as the brown eyes he had when he was alive, not those awesome greenish eyes he has as a spirit being. He once took me on a journey and showed me my spirit being. It will not surprise you when I say I as a spirit have the exact same greenish eyes but with my original reddish hair, the hair color I was born with. 
I wish that it stayed. But although I never dyed my hair, it changed in color to brownish. But sometimes when the sun has the right angle, you can see my original hair color coming through. I have different shades of brown in my hair, from light to darker, same as he had. And because of those green eyes, which I also recognized from my son, and couldn't find any reference of these kind of eyes in both sides of his parental family, Michael simply stated, that's because he is ours. He is a soul being split from us as a union. He has a sister too. Well, in fact, she isn't his sister, but his other half, like you and me. And then you have to try and come to terms with that kind of information. And he had the funniest remark on one of my other burning questions. Was there ever a point in time when our energy fields crossed or touched, if I can use that term? You can use that term. And yes, several times. But the most precious time was when you gave birth to your child. That almost floored me. But hey, look, he said. I was there in spirit form, in an outer body experience. And in fact, I didn't experience anything consciously. It was in my sleep time, my dream time. But when I crossed over, they showed me. And when I asked why I was there, they told me, because she's the one which was rather puzzling, and I asked, the child, and got answered, no, the mother, and she needed you there. He also told me about several other almost encounters and the merging of energies on earth between us. And each time milestones happened in both our lives. The synchronicity is mesmerizing, really. The most significant to me is I walked the sidewalk in front of his house, when his partner was in her last weeks of pregnancy, of his one and only child, a baby girl. He also explained that the intense loneliness I experienced back in 1997 was because he crossed over. And about a weird, terrifying day in June 2007, he said, I'm sorry, that was me. That were my feelings at the exact same moment I took my life. That literally made me cry and asked him, and where was I? He simply stated as if it was nothing. You were on the other side of the globe, honey. He inspires me to go through great lengths of research about all sorts of significant things. Many others who were actually in his surroundings when he was alive confirmed many things Michael told me about himself. Plus, when it comes to the more metaphysical type of information, everything he ever told me, I got confirmed through real deal metaphysical information from others, and so on and so forth. And to close this, I have to tell one thing still. We talked about enlightenment, ascension and a lot. And because he said this life, the life he lived in embodiment as Michael Hutchins, was his last lifetime in the earthly cycle. And I said, when that is so, ascension will be your part soon. And he answered, yes and no. Yes, that is true. And soon, yeah, to some extent, giving time nor space exists behind the veil. But I am waiting for you. I can't ascend without you. We are a unit. Alpha can only ascend when Omega ascends and vice versa. And that made perfect sense. I never consciously knew he existed until that vision in 1997 and the actual meeting in 2007. So I don't know if all this makes sense to you, but it sure as anything does. To me.